It is an uncommon thing to see a politician retire from active service and just decide to go into retirement and just stay there. I mean, we have some people who do that, but it is really difficult for many. Today on Face to Face, we're going to speak to someone who was what you can describe as a live wire of a government who decided after the government to just go quiet on face to face my name is umaru sanda amadu you're welcome i'll introduce my guest when we come back if you followed politics during the kufo administration kojo mpn is, is not a name that you should uh, forget. I mean, in private life or in the past, he was called Christopher. And then there's also Ochi in his name, but we all know him as Kojun Pieni, the chief of staff who served in the Kufu administration. He's my guest on Face to Face today. Chairman, you're welcome to Face to Face. Thank you. How are you? I'm very okay. Uh, very okay. It's good to see you looking nice in retirement. Well, I want to take it easy. <laughs> I'm an old man now, so. It's 13 years since you and John Kufu walked out of the castle having finished the eight-year tenure of his administration. Where did you go to on that day when you left? On that very day? Yeah, after, after Atamils took the oath and well, you knew Well, we were at the, at the Black Star uh, Square on that day. After that, we came home to President Kufo's house. You didn't go to Castle? Castle was no more a place no, for no, you? No, 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 no. We've left. We've left, so there was no need to go back. And we haven't left anything there for us to go and take it. When did you okay? When was the last day you walked out of the castle and said goodbye? Do you remember? That was the, on the 6th of January. Oh, oh the day really. before the swearing? Yeah, yeah. We were still in government as, as at that time. So that was the last day, packed our things and left the castle for the new man to come in. Do you miss the castle? No, I don't. At all? At all. Who is Kojon Pini? Aside what we know on TV and reading the newspapers, you were even described as a prime minister. I'll ask you about that. But who are you in private life? In private life, I'm a simple, very simple man, very quiet man. Uh, from a village, uh, about 25 miles or maybe 32 kilometers in modern time, or 40 kilometers from Kumasi on the Asante Mampon Road. That's where I come from, both parents. Both What's the name mother. of your town? It's Jamasi. 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 Okay. So both parents, mother, father from there. That's where I was born, brought up there until I left and went to secondary school in Kumasi Prempe College. How many children were you? Or are oh, you? my father had uh, uh, many children. Oh, oh, we are about 22. <laughs> 22. Same wife? Or oh, how, which, which woman can give 22? You will be, sure, be shocked. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, so I, have, I, have never, I haven't seen that yet. Okay. Anyway, yeah. okay. So you no. are number what? Do you, do number you, one. You are the first child? The first child, yeah. So you have both, so many, my, both my mother and my father. So you have tw 21 junior yeah. si sisters yeah, 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 and yeah, brothers. Yeah, yes. Are they yeah. all alive? They are all alive, yeah. Wow. All of them. So you are like the... If you pay, is that the proper There's Something like that. Something mm -hmm. like that. The elder, they look up to. Any of them in politics? One of them you hear very much on, on radio, Kwabna Sapon, who lives in Tema. Kwabna Sapon is your brother? That's my brother, yeah. With the uh, specs? Yes, yes, he's my brother. Oh, interesting. Uh, he's the one you hear very much of and on radio. He's your junior brother? He's mine. He's, I think, number five of our... After you? Yeah. Wow, okay, interesting, right. interesting. Yes. So, you, you, you came straight into politics, you were a member of parliament. Was that the same village you were MP for? Yes, that time they called the constituency Mampon South. This was Jamasi, the main towns are or where Jamasi, Nsuta, and Kwaman. These were the main towns. You were MP the, under the Buzia government, was it? No, in the 79. 79. During, the, oh. during Liman's time, the Terra Republic. Okay, okay, okay. Liman. Yeah. You were elected. So you both served for what? One year and a half or less? Two years, three months. Two years, three months. Where were you when Jerry Rollins' shrill voice announced? On June 4th, I was, I was, I've gone to Jamasi uh, for the holidays. But what, when I was going, there was an indication that something like that may happen. So this was 31st December, not June 4th, 31st, 31st December, December yeah. 1981. Yeah, 1981, because I had a friend in the security services. He used to come to me. He was more like a nephew. So he came to me 
on Christmas Day in Accra because I left for Jamasi on Boxing Day. And he came, we chatted, and he told me, Uncle, I want to go and take your passport with you. Uh, we think something may happen. Wow. So I said, what, what are you talking about? You are the security. He said, well, we've been talking to the president and people around him. They don't seem to accept what we're telling them. But some of us in the inner circles of the security believe Jerry Rollins may do something. You know, we arrested him. We were asked to uh, release him. We did. And so we believe something may happen. So he warned me before I left for my village. So you went with your passport? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't go with the passport. But you were in the village regardless when the announcement when came? When the announcement came. Did you come to Actually, Africa? I was going... Uh, I've gone to another village to talk to the people. So when I was coming back, somebody stopped me and... Have you heard what has happened? I said, what? Well, at the time, no telephones, no radio, no, 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 like no, that? No, no, no. I said, well, this is what has happened. I said, well... So you didn't head to Accra. What did you do? Did I, you? I didn't come back to Accra. Because they usually say everybody should well, report to the police station. Well, they wanted us to report to the nearest police station. But I asked myself, why should I go and report? Number one, I wasn't a member of the government. Number two, I was an MP. I was just serving my country. And I was asking myself, was it a crime to serve the country? No, I wouldn't go and report. So I was in a village for about three days. Then a colleague who was here sent somebody to come to tell me that under no circumstances should I go and report because the information was getting about three or four of us who were in the position isn't good. And if I go, I will have a problem. So I left the village and went to a town, Awaso, in the western region, hoping to stay there for some time and come back. Then a colleague, uh, a schoolmate who was in the armed forces in Kumase also sent a message to me that even they don't know what is happening, so I should not. After staying there for some time, I decided to leave Ghana and went to Ivory Coast. So you, you fled through Ivory Coast? Yeah. I stayed in Ivory Coast. Did you Coast go through the, the normal border, the Elubo border? Or no, no, no. At that time, they've sealed the borders. And so all illegal that. routes? Yes, there was somebody who took me through the uh, cocoa farm to the other side of the... Wow. Of there. And you entered Ivory Coast? Entered Ivory Coast. Did you go to the government to publicly declare who you were or just went as a we private went citizen? went as a private citizen. But when I got there, some other members of parliament and ministers were there. Oh, were hiding there too? Yeah, were there. So we grouped ourselves and then reported ourselves to the government of Côte d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast. Fortunately for us also, especially for me, there was this late Dr. Claudeni. He was there. He was Professor Buzia's ambassador to Côte d'Ivoire. And when they, could, when they removed Professor Buzia, he refused to come. He stayed there. He was an, an eye specialist. Okay. Eye specialist. And he was very close to uh, President Vuboyne. So he asked him to practice there. I see. So when he heard I was there, he invited me to his house, gave me some. <laughs> nice lunch. <laughs> so you felt at home? Uh, how can you feel at home? So you felt uh, maybe a little comfortable for some time. From Ivory Coast, you didn't come back to Ghana, right? You no, proceeded. from Ivory Coast, I went to the UK. I went to London. When did you come back to Ghana? How many I years? I came back after 10 years. I came back in 1992 for a very short time. So from just 81 before, to 92? 92. Just yeah. came in, just before the elections. And after the elections, I went back. And then I decided to come back. So I came back finally in 1993. 93? Yeah. So that was when you then came to join Kufu 96? Yeah, when I came in 92, I knew he had he was contesting the primaries. Against the uh, uh, Dubois and mm. others. I, so I realized that it was going to be difficult for him at that time. You know, I went to him. When, when did you first meet him? Is this someone you've always known or...? Well, I've known him since 1955. Oh, okay. I met him in secondary school. Oh, you were, he you was were one year ahead of me. You were schoolmates? Yeah, schoolmates, yeah. We were schoolmates. So in 92, you knew he would lose against... I Edouard. knew. I've, I haven't been here for long, but I knew the, the conspiracy, if I can use the word, was against thick. him was big. Did, did he... Did you tell him not to contest? No, I didn't, because I've come 
very late. Okay. Yeah. But you were still on his side. Yes. Quietly. Yeah. When did you publicly decide to campaign after with him? the after the election when he lost, then we regrouped and then this time let's take it up and see what we can do. That was ninety six. That was the first the election was ninety six. Yes. But we regrouped somewhere in ninety four. Okay. Yeah. Ahead of the election. Yeah. Ninety six you lost. We lost. How were you campaigning? Were you on the campaign trail? Yes, I was. I was how right how easy or safe was it campaigning against a government that had just changed clothes from military uh, to it, civilian? It, it was difficult. It was difficult. Uh, could, I couldn't find any difference between the PNDC and, and the NDC. It was the same thing. Mm -hmm. Trying to change clothes was the same thing. That's what I saw. Were there soldiers still active? There were. The soldiers were very active. Even in 1996 elections, the soldiers were very active, you know. Was there money to campaign against a government that has been in power for more than no, we didn't years? have any money. Because I was joking, I was I was joking with colleagues around that if we were to win the election, I was going to write a book and the title would be how to win an election with that money. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have any money. We didn't. We didn't. We, what, we, we, Did we you have didn't. cars? I think we had about ten cars for the whole country. Ten cars? Yeah. For the campaign of ninety six. Yeah. Who, who brought those cars? We bought them. Some people, people were even scared to make contributions. What kind of cars were these? Tundras? No, 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 no. <laughs> you see, they called this, what did they call this? Uh, later on, what, jokingly, they called it a Korabako castle. They were these small okay. uh, Korean cars. What did they call it? Tigo or something. I've forgotten the name. There was Tigo. There was Daewoo Tigo, but I don't know if that's. Uh, that, that's a very small car. Yes, yeah, those were cars we were using. Akolau Kohin, they used to call uh -huh, it. Ah, those were the cars. Daewoo Tigo. Okay, yeah. I yeah. see. Yeah. So, 96, you lost. We lost. And then 2000, you won. Yeah. You won against Jerry Rollins' his party, yes. even though he didn't contest. Well, then, uh, yes, he didn't, but it was against him. It was because his party. he was all over the country campaigning. When Kufo was sworn in in 2001, did you okay? You didn't immediately go to the castle. You were not. You were not the first first chief no, of no, staff. No, we didn't go. No, no I wasn't you, the you first. I, was, I wasn't the first chief of staff. What role the did elite. you play before you became chief of staff? Well, you see, I was at the center of affairs with okay. him. Yeah. Okay. Campaigning. Whenever he traveled out, I was there. Things, messages would come to me, and I have to communicate to him wherever okay. he was. Okay. So I was very close to him. You were in his immediate cabinet, immediate cabinet. kitchen cabinet. Or if you want to call it that, kitchen <laughs> cabinet. Yeah. Did you feel safe on 7th January 2001 going into the castle knowing that you are taking over from Jerry John Rollins? Well, first we didn't go to the castle. You know, he set up his office at the State House for quite a time mm -hmm. before he we went to the castle. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have any fears, even though we felt security was very important. The President was very much aware of that. Don't forget that He's been uh, put in prison for, I think, two times or so, 70, 69, 79, and, and what, and then, yes, about two, two times for being a member of parliament and being a member of uh, government. And therefore, he was very aware of the possibility of something like this happening. So security was critical? Very critical. Did you guys at any time fear that the soldiers may come back? Uh, not fear. It, I won't say fear, but we are aware the possibility of them coming back, and therefore we must do things right to make it impossible for any adventurer to use our actions as a basis to come back to power. Reflecting today, what do you think was going through Rollins's mind? His house sat around the ridge roundabout. The castle was in far. Whenever you guys are going to work, your sirens will be blowing through his house. What do you think was going through his I head? wish I could, read, <laughs> I could have read his mind. I, I don't know. But I think he might not have been comfortable because even initially, you know, President Gufo and uh, the late president had occasional meetings, you know, just to make him feel safe that nothing was going to happen to him or anything. And he wanted this as some sort of a permanent sort of thing. So President Kufo said, no, we're not going to do that. I will not seek advice from you every day. I'm not going to be consulting no, you no. constantly. You see, he, he, 
uh, that's maybe uh, mm. one does some sort of concentration every maybe seek permission mm -hmm. you know, mm. if I will use okay. those words. Before, not before I accepted to meet him, I think about three occasions in neutral ground, not in the castle of his, but at a, a neutral place. But after some time, he sent the people to come and ask him the prayer. Before I said, Look, I've given him enough respect. I don't think I want to repeat this. Professor Hoy wrote in his book that there was one day the country was so charged, he worried that there would be a coup. Did you have any such feeling any time? I, I, honestly, I didn't have any such feeling. I, I didn't have any such feeling. Did you find Professor Mills a formidable opponent going into 2000, going into 2004? No. You were not worried about I'm him? I'm not at all? worried about him. I've known him, you know, I was in Legon with him. Okay. I've known him, a gentleman, perfect gentleman. Okay. But I didn't find him to be somebody. I was even surprised he went into politics, you know, when I came back from exile and saw him. You didn't expect him to be? I was not expecting him. <laughs> I no, see. No, no, no. Interesting. When did you become chief of staff? Uh, September 2001. I think nine months after. Oh, nine months into the government. Yeah, I did. So you were chief of staff from September to, 2000, to 2009. So yes, for, so yes. you said for eight, about eight years, almost eight about, about, yeah, years. Also, we had a de facto chief of staff throughout. Oh, um, Obeche Bilante did just a few. Yeah, very few months, few months. And he went to be minister. Was it for tourism? And first, he started uh, minister of tourism, and then uh, what was what was the? There was minister for tourism and beautification, beautification of Accra. Beautification Accra. Yes, yeah. which was a new yeah, ministry yeah, that Kufo yeah, created. Yeah, yeah. I see. I see. He had ideas, you know, about. You know, uh, I mean, uh, Dick, Dick. Yeah, about how to make Accra very beautiful and what. There was a joke I heard that people drove home one night, came back the following day, trees had been planted and they were very tall in the median of the Liberation Road. I don't know if you remember that. When you were <laughs> I, I don't remember here. that. I, I heard it on the radio. I don't remember that. Uh, but he, he, he had ideas of how to change the, 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 the city, you know, with mono race and things of that nature. So uh, it was appropriate when the president asked him to do that. What were, or what are the terms of, okay, rather, what were the terms of reference or conditions for you as a chief of staff? As in, what did Kufo say you should do for him? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting question. A very interesting question. I don't think the president will call you and say, do this A, B, C, D for me. But you have been put there. I expect you to work well. And you become some sort of a bridge between the president, the rest of the government, and the party. You know, presidency, the pres if you're a president, I, I always pity them when, because you're completely cut off. Really? You see, the security will surround you. First, people, it's not easy for people to see you as they used to see you. And it's not even easy for you to go out. Even if you're going to go out, the security will have to survey where you want to go and whatnot. And therefore, it becomes something like a lonely sort of job, you know. And therefore, you might get people you trust who can come and tell you as it is, you know. Because if you don't get that and you have people who come, oh, everything is fine, people are happy, when you know they are not happy. But fortunately for President, well, he himself also, his uh, telephone was always open. He was using the same number? Same number. And they didn't take it from him? You, the people around him didn't take it from no, him? No, 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 no. <laughs> so people could call him, so he knew more also of what was happening. And in some of them, he couldn't intervene, he had to do it through somebody and this will be the work of the of the chief so of the staff. chief of staff is a man who runs the government behind the president well i wouldn't say runs the government he's the one who supports the president to run the, the run the government ministers were your small boys they were not we were colleagues <laughs> i'm we're not sure co we were colleagues <laughs> really yes did you well, go to cabinet meetings oh i did the chief of staff should always be at the cabinet meeting what was the difference between your role and the role of the vice president the vice president rule is in, uh, uh, 
stated clearly in the in the constitution. Yeah, but that is in print. But in practice, in practice, you have to follow that. You have to follow your constitution. But the president may add other duties. Was Kojon Pieni no more powerful than Ali Muhammad? No, he couldn't be more powerful than Ali Muhammad. Really? Yes. People give different stories about how... You couldn't, you couldn't. You see, they accept that, you know, uh, really, if you look in the constitution, what's the function of a vice president? Acting in the stead of president. So maybe your, your uh, hope is for the president to die for you to take over. Then you have real power. Otherwise, Otherwise, you don't have really have power. Any power you have will depend on what the president wants you to do. And unfortunately for even our vice presidents, the, some of the powers given to them in the constitution, uh, the Rawlings took them away, like being the chairman of uh, police council, being the chairman of uh, defense council and whatnot. Because of his problems with the late Aka, who was the vice president, he asked Parliament to take all of this away. Do you think then that we should not even have the role of vice president? Ah, well, it may, it may not be very... Personally, I think we may not need it. It's useless. It won't be useless, but... It's the, pointless. What, what, is the real, what is the real power of, the vi of a vice president? His practice in America, that's a leading democracy. Oh, they, they have real powers for him. But here... So what would be your proposal? Let's give new powers to the vice president or, look, just forget this maybe, vice president maybe, thing. Maybe you have uh, some sort of prime minister position, you know. So you would rather there's a president, a prime minister? Yes. But in that case, the president becomes weak, the prime minister becomes... No, 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 the president appoints you the prime minister. Okay, okay. Your president appoints the prime minister. That's, that's his government, so he appoints you to head his government. So you can be powerful. So he becomes government. ceremonial? It's not ceremonial. Like what happened between Akufado's father and George? No, uh, that was ceremonial. Okay. Because well, the prime minister was the head of government. That was what the constitution, and the constitution gave okay. the powers to the okay. prime minister. Okay. So, but do they made you ceremonial? They were signing the laws, uh, attending ceremonies and whatnot. <laughs> no. So that's different. This is Face to Face on City TV. My name is Umar Rosanda, and my guest is the man who has been described as Kufu's prime minister. Uh, Kojun Pieni is my guest. He was the chief of staff of the Kofor administration. When we come back, I'm going to ask him, is it true he was hiring and firing ministers? Because those are all claims that have been made against him. And he's been sitting outside watching for 13 years. What does he make of our governance and government so far? You're welcome back to Face to Face on City TV. My name is Omaru Sanda Amadou. I'm having a conversation with Kojun Pieni. He's a former Chief of Staff. Um, you're welcome back, sir. Um, 13 years you've been away. What have you been up to? Oh, <laughs> I really don't have any sort of regimental sort of program to follow. I stay here for some time. I go to my village or town. I've been trying to do some farming away from there, quite the land. And uh, I go to that place also to see what's happening there. Is life outside politics boring? It's, it can be boring. It can be boring because you're used to some sort of a regular way of doing things, even before politics. When busy, working in an institution, you get up, you go to work, you stay up to that time, you come home. Politics, all manner of people will come descend on you, thinking that you can solve all their problems for them. Apart from that, you have your duties in the office and whatnot. And then all of a sudden, you stop all these things. <coughs> when you stop initially, it's some sort of a relief, you know. So, oh, at least I can rest now. <coughs> Excuse me. And my wife and children, for example, were very happy when we. They, House became very quiet. But otherwise, you get up in the morning by six. My house is there. Are people, people. You go to office. People are there. You come back later by 11 p.m. Only you still have people there. You but were no, a very powerful man. I, I don't know what you mean by a powerful man. Actually, every because, newspaper headline that talked about the government had you 
holding a telephone to your ear, a photo of you holding a telephone to your ear. Because I think, the, I think it was at the Black Star Square. There was something, I was talking to somebody, and somebody took a photo that photograph. You. And then the next thing I saw was... We are told that thing. when you call ministers, they were quaking in their boots. Oh, yes. You see, I, 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 I sort of represent the president. So if I ask a colleague to come, he knows it's either the president who asks him to tell him something, or maybe I want to discuss some issues with him. It was a normal, for, normal thing for them to get. It wasn't something like a master and a boy sort of a master or servant and a call and therefore you have to run. No, there was nothing like that. Did you ever, it was an exaggeration. You know? <laughs> Did you ever fire a minister? How can I fire a minister? Did you recommend the firing of any minister? How can I fire? I can or, recommend. You're the chief of staff. You know how the staff well, are doing. Well, I, I can't recommend the firing of a minister, but I can let the president know what somebody has done after some investigations. So it's left to the president to decide whether that person should stay You want to share not. any with us? Anybody? Oh, I think it wouldn't be fair it for me be fair. to sit here and say, Mr. A or Madam B did this or that, and therefore I discussed with the president this what happened. No, it wouldn't be A wouldn't colleague be right. journalist tells me a story of how one minister was fired and he called the president's phone and you picked up the call and said, you're calling to confirm you have been fired. No, you do you remember true. that? Never, nothing, not, <laughs> nothing like that ever happened. That's not true. Wow. That's Interesting. That's not true. How much involved were you in the consultations in running the government? So did he refer, did he come to you for everything I'm, re, I'm in Kofo? No, you sit in the, in the same building with the president. You are his chief of staff. So every morning he'll contact you. If you haven't gone to him, you call you, you try to find out what's happening in some areas. He may refer a lot of things to you to either investigate or work on it. So he needs reports from you. Mm. So he calls you to say, what is happening to this thing I ask you to do? I hear this is what, in, can you find out if it's true or not? So every day, every day, that's your work. Mm. You mm. have to. The first thing in the morning, you see the president, you go into your office, the president can call you at any time. And before you leave the office, if you stay there, and in most time he'll be there. You have to let him know that you go in. What about the vice president? What was your relationship with Ali Muhammad? Muhammad? Personally, it was very fine. Very, very fine. But administratively, were there any? Administratively, there wasn't any because the, as I said earlier on, you see, the vice president hasn't got any special duties which will enable him to call me and say, maybe do this. And don't also forget that the vice president also has the right to appoint a chief of staff to the vice president, okay. who also support him okay. in his administration. They say that you people in the Kufa administration deliberately sidelined Ali Mahama. Allegations have been varied. Some said it was ethnic and so on. What do you say to that? He, he, he didn't apply for any post. I mean, uh, uh, Ali Muhammad. Ali Muhammad, yeah. And he wasn't voted for. It was Kufo himself who called him and told him, I want to make you my running mate. So how can he uh, push him away on ethnic grounds? And nobody forced him on him. So there are so many of these allegations which are just not true. And I don't know how, why people have such fertile minds to be thinking about these things. These are not true. What do you make of all the corruption allegations that were thrown at your government when you were in power? You see, when any time... They said you were so corrupt, in fact, <laughs> the tag was so huge. See, and when Kufo said corruption was as old as Adam, that was a phrase that the opposition could run with. Oh, that is true, isn't it? That is true. You, th you still think that that was a comment that is fair to have made, to have been made oh, at the time? He, he, you see, he was advising the party, the government, and said, I know that corruption is as old as Adam, but you must be careful the way you handle yourself. Because you, this is a small country. So you pinch yourself. The little thing you do, you think people don't see you. People see you. And some of them will get to me and get to others. So it was just an advice. It was just an advice that was given to his party and members of his government. But you see, this was compounded by the Haruna Iseku allegations. 
of kickback. You see, at times, at times you ask yourself, why should people behave like that? Harun Ezeku was the chairman of the party. Uh, he's been advised to step down because we're going to go there. He didn't like it. And he still wanted to do it. He said, well, nobody can force you. You can go on. But our investigation, our research shows that there's no way you can win. But in any way, we are advising you to step down. And then you said, oh, because I'm coming for, there for money, you all want to give money to me. And I said, no, this has nothing to do with that. And then you become angry and you start saying things which a normal senior citizen shouldn't do. And when you were asked to prove what you've said, then you see, I didn't see that it was the press man or whoever who put that, those words in my mouth. Oh, nothing of that happened. How could you come to Castle, broad daylight, what is this, and pack money? I wish that stupid to pack money and give it to you, carry into your car. For everybody to see this, assuming even we want to give you money. I wish that's very stupid that you come to the castle, we pack money into your bags and ask you to carry the yeah, money away. As chief of staff, did you take money from ministers to let them sign contracts, to agree for them to sign contracts? How? I do. I think that's it. what the kickback thing is about. No, I mean, how can I take money from minister? To do what? For you him were, to sign contracts? You are not a front man for the corruption in the government. You see, we, we talk of corruption. And I won't sit here to say there was no corruption. No. I won't. There was. Oh, when you have these things, that I, I, can, I can say, yes, there might have been some corruption. No doubt about that. You know. But there was so much noise of corruption. But when they were asked to prove this corruption, what happened? Me sitting here, I was told that I was sent to court. Ghana at 50. Ghana at 51. Maybe you get one of the report and read. And we we'll see what charges. I mean, that of course, financial loss. What's the financial loss? You put up uh, houses, the AU houses. AU you know, village. AU village. According to them, with that authority from the government. According to them, you went to a bank to take a, a, a loan, according to them, to build the houses. They are not saying that the houses cost less than I mean, the money you took. Then maybe you have to justify it. No, they are not saying that. But they are saying that you took a loan to build the houses. And for not getting permission to do that, that's causing financial loss to the state. I said, how? Even if, if I didn't even get permission, I built a house. The value of the house at that time was far higher than the money I took to build a house. So how does that become causing financial loss to the state? But the corruption tag was so uh, big that many believe that's the reason you but lost the election. It, it, I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. You don't think you lost the election? I don't want to go into my reasons why we lost the election. I don't want to do that now. But you do not think corruption was the reason? I don't think so. But that's what I say. Who proved any corruption against who? The press or well, the... But when government changed, you know, there's every opportunity to prove all the corruption. Which one was proved? Now some of them are going to Kufo to tell him that we are, so, we, we are sorry. We said that you've taken money from here. All these were not true. Now, as we sit here now. Unfortunately for us in Ghana, <laughs> you know, especially, I'm sorry to say that, the press, you know, you won't do investigation. Yes, there's corruption in the country. There's no doubt about that. So if we hear that I have taken some money, fine. I think your first duty is to find out if I've taken the money. Maybe who is, is, I've really taken money. The one who gave me the money won't tell you about But you can investigate to find out the truth or otherwise of this. But here, as soon as it's, somebody says it, that's the headline. 
how did you deal with the press at the time? The press was not as active as we have today, or I mean, the platforms were not as many as we have today, but there was this, I mean, Kufo had a, a girlfriend with twins. You remember Philip and, and that's, John? That's another, that's another, another how, of the stories. How do you do all these things around? You see, twins, we're going to bring them up, get daily dress. Gis Giselle Yagzi. We are here. We haven't seen the twins. The lady even hasn't <laughs> come back since then. Weren't you frustrated by those things? Why well, it's frustrating? At times, you know, because at times you just don't understand why people should believe some of these things. Why shouldn't people do their own sort of research to find out the truth or otherwise of these things? Yes, it's good for the press to do these things. That puts the government on its toes. Because if to today, you hear that I have taken some money and you do research and find evidence to prove it, you really put me on such a, uh, giving me such a difficult time to present. Then the uh, uh, president will have to act on it. And when we even talk of corruption in Ghana, we always seem to look at the, polit the, the, the political class. No, no. Yes, there's corruption in Ghana, but it cuts across the whole uh, 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 society. What about nepotism? How did you deal with nepotism in your government? You had in, your defense minister being the brother of Kufo for... And who else? I'm just saying. No, no. Was that, that, was that, was that when for, you talk of nepotism, you can't take just pick one person and say because of this nepotism. The guy was an MP himself before Kufo became uh, uh, president. president. He was spokesman on defense and other things and health when we were in opposition before Kufo became president. Why was he chosen? Competence or family? It's not family, competence. I sure it was not family because you're afraid of a coup, so he you put the your oh, brother. Well, well uh, if you are afraid of coup, okay, and your brother is not competent and you put him there, maybe you're inviting coup than putting your brother there. But if you know your brother is competent and you put him there, then you know. What do you make of the expression or the phrase family and friends government? It's do you think a government must contain your family and friends? If some of them are called, but, I, but when you have too many of them in, then you have a problem. You see, it's even possible that your friends and your uh, family may be the most intelligent in the country. But we are dealing with diverse group of people within the society. And so we must be seen to be bringing everybody in. So yes, maybe you look around your family and friends, supposing it's an examination, they will top everybody. But because of the society, which is so diverse, you have to make sure that you don't appoint all of them. You bring people from other... Uh, the accusation you know. against the Akufuado administration is that it's a family and friends government. Well, I hear that. But I haven't done any research to prove it. You haven't? Yes, so I hear that. D you do not think it's true? Or you, do not, you don't know? You haven't that's, checked? That's what I haven't, I haven't done. It. There may be some truth in that. Mm. I, I wouldn't deny that. What would be your know. highest... Or what would be the highest in your government in eight years? What would you describe as the highest point in your government, Kufo's government? I, I think the peace in the country, one, then the economy and business picked up. Because I remember people would come to me, especially businessmen, who were very happy, things have changed so much that their businesses were going on well. Even aspiring businessmen, the young one would say that at the time they will be in the offices, banks will come to them trying to convince them to come to them so that it will give them loans and whatnot. So I was happy to see these things happening because I realized it shows that the economy was, was booming. Going with and what booming. would you describe as the lowest point of your government? The lowest point to me was when uh, the, the Yana was killed. The murder of the Yana. The murder of Yana. That to mm. me was the lowest point, mm. Mm. you know. Mm. And unfortunately, uh, two of prominent people in the government, one interior minister, one security coordinator, 
were from that area. You know. So it was a lowest point for you? To me, I thought, I thought it was very low. Let's talk about discipline in government. So as chief of staff, you were the, like the class rep. Yeah. You're supposed to ensure talkatives are reported or they stop talking. You are the face between the teacher and the classroom, even though you want to describe yourself as a colleague of the others. How do you deal with discipline? Do you threaten the person directly? Do you report them? What, what do you do? Well, we talk to, we talk to people. You see, and, the, and the, the man at the top is the most important person, the president. He has the power. As for you are working for the president. So you see something, you may call your colleague and discuss with your colleague that this is what I'm hearing, this is what people are saying. You know, I've done some little investigation and this is what I'll find out. So please, be careful about that. I don't think it's gotten to the president yet. So you, could. so you discuss with your colleagues, you know. At times also the president will call the person, you know. Uh, his approach to gov governance was different. It wasn't some sort of a dictator and his uh, ministers. No, he will call you to discuss it with you, you know. And he will start by saying, oh, but what am I, for example, what am I hearing? So if you've done something, you start straight away you start mm, to know mm, that. Mm. Then if you're not saying this, say, oh, what has happened to this project we are doing and what not? So your own conscience will tell you that mm, if you've done something, mm, this man is aware of what I've been doing. And so after talking to you, you just want to go back and do what is right. And I don't want to hear any of these things. In so many cases, you called me there when you was talking to some of them. Many people have been calling for the resignation of some ministers in the Akufado government. Some have been saying he should fire them if he didn't resign him themselves. Are there ministers in this government you think should be fired or should have resigned based on what they would have done or not done? You see, it's very difficult to comment on such when you are away, when you are not in. Because As I said previously, you don't have to depend on the press alone to take decisions, you know. But when you are in there and some of these things happen, at least for nothing at all, you can ask the security to investigate these things. And so when they investigate, they will come and tell you what the facts are. And based on that, you can either ask the person to resign. If he doesn't want to resign, you can sack the person. Is there any deal done by this government that if you were still chief of staff, you would have said to the president, I think this guy is causing us too much trouble? Or this well, guy... you see, that's what I'm saying, that if you, if you can tell me something which is concrete, mm. like this one, this is what happened, and then, then maybe I'll be able to give you uh, an answer to that. Okay. Okay. You know. Okay. Because once you are not part of it, once you are not there, I can't sit back, read newspapers, and make listen a to radios, and make a, a decision on such things. But if there are some, if you are very sure of something definite, and want to ask me, and I tell you that if this is what has happened, then I think that person must I go resign or must be sacked. Very well. This is face to face on City TV. My guest is Kojun Pieni. He's a former. Our chief of staff we're having a conversation on governance generally when we come back i ask him what is the ghana project looking like and also can the mpp break the eight and who do will do that breaking stay with us you welcome back to face to face on city tv uh, my name is umaru sandama my guest is uh, kojo mpini former chief of staff when you were leaving the government kufo had a choice didn't he someone to replace him he didn't. He didn't? He didn't. No. He, he was not supporting Alan Chomanti. You see, people say this, uh, and I know some of colleagues who went to him and said, look, come out openly to say, I support this, and it will be better for the party. But he said, no, I know this party more than many of you. I was in this party, and I know what happened in 1979. 
there was this split in this party. And it took us about 31 years before we got power. And so I don't want to go on a track which may lead us into that sort of situation. So I'm not going to do that. And what he told them, as a human being, by all means, my heart will be with one of these. He said, he only said that there were only three of them who, if he's elected, he won't find his way clear to go and support. Otherwise, whoever the party will elect, he will support. Who are these three? He mentioned, he said that he didn't, we won't go and support uh, uh, Honorable Apreku at that time. Kofi Konedo Apreku. Kofi Konedo Apreku at that time. Or uh, Dambotri at that time. And I think Osafu Mafu at that time. Why? He sacked them. He sacked them from his government. Yeah. Osafu Mafu is like doing, he was doing the job you were doing in the last government of the Akufuado administration. Yeah. He was like de facto chief of staff, even though he was senior minister. Yeah. It must have echoed the former president to see that Osama Mavu has progressed. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Before really? nature is not like that. It's not like that. He would tell you where I worked with him. At that time, he did this. That's why. I so, so he wasn't supporting Aliu Mahama, and he wasn't supporting. Alain he Chavis. wasn't. It even it took a long time before, that is before, because before Alu went to him because I remember I chatting with him. And, he said, but Ali even hadn't come to me to tell me that he wants to run. It took a long time before Ali went to him to inform him that he wanted to run. He said, well, if you're taking your decision already, I wish you the best. You do not think that it was because of that uncertainty and indeed the belief that he wasn't supporting Akufuado that your party lost in 2008? No. Why do you think you lost in 2008? Well, you asked me earlier on and I said I don't want to go there. I was hoping you would have forgotten that you didn't want to answer and you answer me now. No. You're not going to answer. No, I won't. I won't. I won't. You see, after the, 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 there were so all these accusations, Kufuadu didn't support Kufuadu, Kufuadu. But the amount of support, if you ask Kufuadu himself, personally, you tell him the support Kufuadu gave him, he didn't get that support from anybody. What's Talking to what? friends to, to, to support him financially, uh, advising him on quite a lot of support. What are their relation? What's their relationship like now? Oh, it's fine. It's called yeah. What's your assessment of the five years of the Akufado government? It's doing. It's doing well. He has a, a lot of problems. No doubt about that. What would you want him to fix? Attitude. Attitude in a chain, starting from the government to the average Ghanaian. Should look at that critically. He's able to do that lot of our problems will be solved. Attitude in the government would be what? Approach to governance, behavior to the society. You know, for example, I, I use, you may be with some people, you know, and I see a black uh, land cruiser, I go, wee, wee, wee. you see people, you hear comments of people and you feel sorry about that. You find that in this, you, you find it to be like indiscipline. I find, I find Appointees it driving in V8s and, and using they those say, Go quietly and hold on. Are your people were doing that or? No. No. No one? No. You weren't using sirens? No, 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 no. Unless there's a, some function which you are late to or sometimes you seek permission to do that. Otherwise, no. Accident, accident, but no. Because I very well remember I wrote to everybody that nobody to do that. I remember writing to some um, regional ministers, I think two or three, who were told going to work every day, you go with the in the town and whatnot. It must be stopped and stopped immediately. No. So that's something that if you had your way, you would tell him to. I will stop it immediately. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Who was your best, or who has been your best president since '92? After Kufu, of course. There has been Rollins. Let me help you. Rollins, Atameos, John Mahama, Nana Ruangkwad. What do you want me to say? Who has been your best after <laughs> Kufu? No, I mean, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, for me, and for what happens in our society, assuming, assuming, I'm going to say Rollins. Assuming. I'm not anyway saying that. 
if I don't take you, my party people will even come and sit on me. Ah, you mean we, we don't see anybody better? So it makes it difficult for me to even make a judgment. Yeah. You are an old man, you are a statesman. Feel free, tell us. No. Who is your best? No, because I, I, I served Kufu and he did well. Yes, Kufu, of course, you would mark him number one. Yeah. But who would you mark? Okay, who is your worst government? Or which has been your worst government? I don't want to go into those. You don't want to do because, that? Because, uh, for personally, I didn't like, for example, Jerry, Jerry Rollins. Rollins. Okay, because of obvious reasons. Okay, so, mm, so, mm, mm. so you may not even be a fair yeah, competition. Let's, yeah, let's leave that competition. Let's leave it to the Ghanaians to decide. I see. <laughs> This is face to face on City TV. My name is Omaru Sandamadu. My guest is a former chief of staff, and we are having a conversation on um, lots of issues. Breaking the eight is what the MPP is hoping to do. Who do you think can lead the party to break the eight? Do you believe that Ghanaians will actually even vote for a, a, a party to continue after eight years? It's possible. It's very do you think possible. it's possible with this current MPP government? It's possible. It depends on how we carry ourselves between now and the the next election in 2024. What should you check? Like I said, the discipline, mm -hmm. um, hard work, unemployment especially. We can't solve unemployment all at once, but if people see that we are genuinely trying to solve the problem, it will help us. Infrastructure. Rules. I'm happy you mentioned unemployment. Under Francis Poku, as Minister for National Security, you introduced NYEP, yeah. National Youth Employment Program. Yeah. Because at the time he said it was a security threat. It has always been a security threat. As we speak, in fact, just a week or so ago, thousands of youth went to the conference center because they heard that there were jobs being given. It was a, it was a chaos of a sort. It tells you what is happening in the society. Do you worry for the future? I worry. Considering that? I worry. I worry. I, you see, when people talk of coups and whatnot, I don't worry about those coups and whatnot. But I worry about some sort of an uprising. It is somebody who has nothing to lose. It's finished the university and, and, and they are now smarter young men and women also. Moving around, nothing doing. He hasn't got anything to lose. If he has to get up one day and say, let's get them out of their cars. Let's destroy this. They are not helping us. Okay, he will get support of her. Like what happened in Tunisia. You fear that that could happen? I, that's my fear. That is my fear, to be honest with you. That's my fear. That if we don't do something about these things, it's possible something like that may happen. Do you think something has been done about it? If something has even been done by it, maybe we should quicken the, 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 the pace. We have seen a report that's recommending people. It's mostly people who have done work for the party. Do you think, based on where you sit now, that a DC or MMDC should necessarily be a party member? The way the... Way the, 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 the constitution is made, it's going to be like that. But I don't ag agree with the interviews, because that's going to create more problems for the party. Because you bring four people from a constituency, interview them. And choose one. Choose one. What do you think the other three are going to say? And whatever it is, you are only going to choose one. That's the prerogative of the president to select somebody. So why the, inter why the interviews? We need to end. Last but one question. Emoluments. Do you think former presidents should be paid by the states? Yes. After they leave? Yes. You see, the... the and their the, wives? The, their wives, I'm not too sure. Okay, let me use spouses, not their wives. You do not think their spouses... Well, so far, so far, it's been... Well, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, spouses, I'm not too sure about that. So you agree with the decision to scrap the payment to the spouses, as was done by this government, which was proposed by the Emoluments Committee? When we were there, we are not paying any spouses. I don't know why the, the, the emoluments committee made that decision. Uh, made the decision. They might have explained it in that report. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. Uh, but you don't think it should happen? No, I don't think so. You see, what happened when we went to, when we went to government, we realized that the, the PNDC were paying uh, Lehman's wife. Not Liman. Liman wives were not being paid. They were paying 
the generals who had been head of state, okay. wives. Okay. They have killed all of them, you know, and maybe conscience or something, pregnant them, and therefore they decide to pay them. But they have stopped paying after some time. Or they were arrested, not that they have stopped. So when they came, I think one of them, I know one of them very well, came and said, oh, well, you did this thing, they were paying, they have stopped. So I went and realized that, yes, that was true. So I have to discuss with the president. And he said, well, if they've been doing this, let's pay. But then we must add the civilian who have also lost their husbands. Okay. That's why. So that's why the idea. That's why they had okay. the man, mm. wife, and uh, some others came in. Okay. Uh -huh. So we are giving them these, what we call allowances to them. But not, not salary, not end of month salary. No, no, no. Not we need to go now. Who is your money on to break the MPP's aid? Want me to sit here and tell you this? Yes, please. No, I won't. You will not? No. But you have someone in mind? Naturally, I should. Look, ask, is I there Alan Germante or Dr. Mahmoud Bawiyan? Why do you choose only two of them? There are about five or six people who want to contest, or you are not aware of that. I am, sir. So, any of them could be. When will you write a book for Ghanaians to read? Your experience uh, at the castle? Uh, I will do that. We wish you all the best and thank you for speaking to us. And thank you also for coming to, to my, my abode to, to talk to me. That's a name I'm going to mention now that he's never mentioned, Christopher. No, so many, it's only my wife and few people who know that. <laughs> Actually, a full name, my full official name is Kojo Ochre Mpieni. Okay. Yeah. Kojo Ochre Mpieni, Chief yeah. of Staff in the Kufuor Government, was yeah. my guest on Face to Face. Umaru Sandamado is my name. Thank you for watching City TV. It's your world.